welcome back if you're new here my name is Smita welcome to my channel I usually create beauty related videos but today's video is going to be a little bit different if you've been following me on Instagram you would have already seen that I've been creating face masks for hospitals these are standard medical surgical masks used by healthcare professionals and because of the pandemic there is a huge shortage and I just pitched in to help the community and while I'm doing so I just wanted to show you how I create these so if you're ready let's begin first let's look at the materials needed to make the mask You'll need two pieces of cotton fabric. These are six inches by nine inches each. I'm using cotton woven fabric. Quilt fabrics work best for this. You'll need two pieces of elastic strips. These are quarter inch in thickness and seven inches long. You'll need a measuring tape to measure the fabric as well as the elastic. A pair of scissors, needle and thread if you're going to be hand sewing it or a sewing machine if you know how to use it. I'm going to be using a sewing machine today. You use the same concept if you're going to be stitching with your hands. And sewing pins are optional if you need that extra support. I bought the fabric from Joanne Fabrics. I had all of the other supplies at home. The concept for stitching this is pretty simple. I'm going to first cut my fabric into two pieces of six inches by nine inches each. And your cotton fabric should have a front side which is more attractive and a back side to it. I'm going to place one piece of fabric with the front side facing me and the other piece of fabric with the back side facing me. Next I'm taking my two pieces of elastics and I'm going to place it on the shorter side of this rectangle fabric that is the six inch side with the ends of the elastic pointing to the corners of the fabric and the center of the elastic pointing towards the inner part of the fabric. And then I'm going to place the second piece of fabric on top of this with the fronts of each fabric facing one another. Next, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this. I'm going to stitch it completely on three sides and on one of the sides, which is the longer nine inch side, I'm going to leave a two inch gap in the middle so I can turn this inside out. I'm doing a straight stitch and I'm starting with a nine inch side. I'm going to open up the fabric and place the end of the elastic at the corner of the fabric, close it and stitch it. And I'm going to do a back stitch where I place the elastic just to get that extra hold. I'm going to go almost to the end, leaving a small gap so I can pull the other end of the elastic, place it in this corner and do a back stitch over it. Keeping the needle down, I'm going to turn the fabric and I'm going to start doing a straight stitch on this nine inch side. And this is the side where I'm going to leave that small gap in the middle. So I'm not going to stitch all the way out. Next, I'm going to turn the fabric and repeat the same steps on the other side. I'm going to place one end of the elastic in the corner, do a back stitch and then continue to stitch till I reach the other corner, leaving a small gap for the other end of the elastic and do another back stitch. And then I'm going to turn the fabric, doing a straight stitch. I'm going to go almost to two thirds of the fabric, leaving a small gap in the center for us to turn the fabric inside out. And it should look like a flat rectangle with the back side of the two pieces of cloth facing outwards. And you'll also have that small opening in the center, which we will use to turn the fabric inside out. To straighten up the edges, you can slowly pull on the elastic, or you can also use a blunt knife from inside off the pocket pushing it outwards and you should have the base piece looking something like this from the outside next i'm going to stitch this on all the four sides again keeping a seam of about quarter inch and with the opening that i have in the center all i have to do is push the fabric inside flatten it and stitch over it i'm going to be approximately doing a quarter inch seam Now it's time to make those frills or folds and I'll show you a very easy method. I'm going to fold this into half and I'm going to mark the edges using a pressing iron. So I'm going to very lightly press it only in the edges. 
Using that center marking as a guide, I'm going to further fold this into two equal halves and again mark it using the pressing iron. I'm going to turn the fabric on the other side. We already have three markings equally spaced. All I have to do now is pinch each of these markings and do three folds. I'm going to keep it about half an inch. Again, use the pressing iron to press over it. And then I'm going to stitch over the folds in the direction of the folds. Do you remember when we went to Paris in July? Got stuck out in the rain, but we danced around and didn't mind it. So young and reckless, baby, you and I fit just. And the mask is done. You can stop at this if you like, but I like to go with the seam one more time just to make sure that the mask is strong enough to last through several washes and reuses. And this is the finish mask. This is the standard size that the CDC recommends. And of course, we have the folds, which will help to cover all the way from the nose to the neck. And it's comfortable enough on the ends to put over your ears. The smaller the elastic in thickness, the more comfortable it is to go around your ears. So make sure it's uh, either quarter inch or less than that. And that's how I make the masks. And now it's time to make it in bulk. I was inspired by a friend of mine. Her name is Shelly Gupta. She initially alerted the community on the shortage of masks in the entire country. The hospitals have completely run out of it. And I got the information and I started making these masks. I literally converted my beauty room into a mask assembly unit overnight. I bought the fabric from Joanne Fabrics and I started making these. I hope this video will inspire you as well to make these masks. If you make them, don't forget to tag me on social media. I've listed my socials in the description box right below this video. If you're going to be using a sewing machine to stitch these masks, it takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. And if you're going to be hand stitching them, it takes anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes each. Make sure to follow sanitary conditions while you're making these masks at home. Uh, if you're going to be using it on yourself, make sure to sanitize it and launder it before you use it. If you're going to be donating it to hospitals, they will launder and sanitize it themselves. But at the same time, just keep in mind that you're making these to save lives or help people protect themselves from the virus. So make sure you're absolutely clean and you're following all the necessary sanitary rules at home before you make this. It looks so great cold We've been playing his is for a game and you haven't said a word to me mm. Silent treatment is this what it feels like when your heart is sick and when it bleeds If it's over just and I have a full finished box here. I've already dropped off one full box and uh, I got word that they need more. So I'm going to be dropping this off again today. And that's the plan. As I fill in the boxes, I'm going to be dropping them off at the neighborhood hospitals. I'm at the hospital, guys. So I'm going to go in and drop these off. Um, I'm not going to be taking the camera inside for obvious reasons. I don't want to be recording the patients and the caregivers. That's not what this is for. Um, I hope today's video will inspire a lot of you to do this for yourself, your family and hopefully healthcare workers as well. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon with a brand new video. Bye guys! I wanna close my eyes and go back, play it in my mind of us too, yeah, we were happy at the time Can't remember what it felt like We used to be so strong That picture-perfect sky now And look so great cold 